difference is there all the same. Uh, Luke, uh, before I say anything else, anything about what I've brought up? Yeah, so the, the bad things that you're talking about are not something that other people do. It's something that we all do almost all the time. So, for example, if you have kids, right, and you're running late for school, in all likelihood, if you're feeling anxious about that, you're going to start blaming your kids. You're going to be gaslighting your kids, saying, ah, you're to blame because you changed your outfit just before we went to school, and now we're running late. And because we're running late, you know, that's the reason I got into that car accident. I remember my father was under the weather one Saturday morning when I was about 17 years of age, and he was due to preach that morning. And so uh, I think I was responsible for us running a few minutes late. And he was backing out of the garage, and he backed out of the garage by having his driver's side door open and, and looking out with his driver's side door open. So he pranked into the garage because he was so stupid as to, you know, drive at a rapid rate out of the garage with his, his door open. And then he said, you know, it's your fault because we were running late. No, it wasn't my fault. He was gaslighting me. We all tend to gaslight people when we feel anxious. Like, if I feel anxious about what the boss is going to say to me about something I, I, I've mistake I've made or a client's going to say to me, I will immediately start thinking of excuses, ways I can get out of it, ways I can start blaming other people. So all these awful things you're talking about, they're not something that's foreign or removed from us. It's something that we all engage in. We all engage in trying to gaslight people that the things that the bad, stupid, idiotic things that we do are somehow their fault. We all ex exploit people in that we all tend to try to get what we can while giving as little as possible. Most workers try to get as much money as possible while doing as little work as possible. Most employers try to extract as much labor as possible from their workers while paying them as little as possible. In countries like the United States, there's you know, not much of a bond, generally speaking, between employers and employees. It's highly transactional. Neither side feels much loyalty to, to the other. If you're living in a city, all right, it's going to be highly diverse, meaning you don't have much in common with other people around you. When you don't have much in common with other people around you, you're going to feel much more free to treat other people casually. So if if instead of living in an individualist society like Australia or the United States, you lived in a, in a collectivist society such as life in Orthodox Judaism, then you take great care with how you treat people who are within your in-group because they will know people. Wherever I go in the world, I have found, and I go to synagogue, right? we know people in common. right? We start playing Jewish geography, and I go to Sydney, and I go to synagogue there, and we know like 12 people in common in Los Angeles. I go to Brisbane and we, and we know people in, in the Jewish community in California. So if you're part of some kind of strong community like uh, Judaism or Seventh-day Adventism, some kind of high intensity community, you can take that wherever you go in the world and that can act as a, as a check on some of your wilder impulses, certainly within the in-group. But, but my, main, my main point is that this exploitation thing is something that we, we, we all have tendencies towards, We're just trying to extract as much as possible while while giving as little as possible. We all look for, for weaknesses. And someone who is weak is going to get taken advantage of, right? It's, it's up to us to look out for ourselves. Usually uh, other people are not going to intervene. I mean, if you're drunk and you insist on driving, people may try to stop you, may be able to stop you. But in the final analysis, there's a very good likelihood that you will get get behind the wheel of a car and go driving if that's what your your heart is is set on, and so uh, people who like feel exploited or people who feel like they're gaslit, what's really going on is that they are gaslighting themselves. Right, someone who's honest with themselves. Right, someone who has taken stock of their defects. So, for example, I lack common sense. I lack business sense. I I'm not terribly detail oriented. I'm not the type of person you want checking the engines before the, the plane takes off. So if if I like get out of touch with, with my weaknesses and, and deny them and kind of gaslight myself that I have strengths where I'm actually weak, 
then I'm going to be much more vulnerable to other people gaslighting me. If you're honest with yourself, then you'll pick up when other people are lying, deceiving, or trying to exploit you because something will just feel wrong. So the people who continually get lied to and exploited and abused usually lack the, the courage to be honest with themselves or they're just weak and weak animals get eaten and weak human beings get eaten too. And so if you're weak, the, the, the only way to live a life is the opposite of a passport, bro. You want to live within the bosom of your protective family and your protective community. So if you're highly vulnerable, then stay within the confines of your family and your community. It takes courage and independence to be able to go out onto, into the world and go to a foreign country and, and establish a, a life for yourself. So if you have an accurate sense of yourself and your own weaknesses, then you're going to be much less likely to be taken advantage of by others.